Welcome to CoreLogic's housing market update for February 2023. The housing market started the year where it left off in 2022, chalking up the ninth consecutive monthly drop in Australian home values. The National Home Value Index was down 1% over the first month of the year, following a larger 1.1% fall in December. It looks like we may have moved through the eye of the storm in August last year, when our national index dropped by 1.6% in a month. Since then, the national monthly rate of decline has generally eased. However, at 1% over the month and 3.2% down over the rolling quarter, housing values are still falling quite rapidly compared to previous downturns. The downturn remains geographically broad-based, with every capital city posting a decline in dwelling values through the month, led by Hobart and Brisbane, down 1.7% and 1.4% respectively, while the smallest drops were recorded in Perth and Darwin at 0.3 and 0.1%. The most noticeable easing in value falls can be seen across the premium end of the housing market, where the country's most expensive properties have led both the recent upswing as well as the current downturn. Across the combined capitals, the rolling quarterly rate of decline across the upper quartile values has improved from a recent low of 6.1% over the September 22 quarter to 4% down over the three months to January. The trend is most apparent in Sydney's detached house market, where quarterly declines eased from 7.7% in the three months to August to 3.9% in the three months to January. The improvement could be reflective of more buyers taking advantage of larger price drops across the premium sector, where house values are already down 17.4% since peaking back in January of 2022. Despite easing rates of internal migration and a partial erosion of the pre-pandemic affordability advantage, regional housing values are holding up better than capital city markets so far. The milder decline comes after a substantially stronger upswing. Across the combined regional areas of Australia, housing values surged 41.6% higher through the upswing compared with a 25.5% rise across the combined capital cities. Since peaking in June, the combined regional index is down 7.4%, while capital city values are down 9.6% from their April peak. This will be an interesting trend to watch over the longer term, but at the moment, it seems regional housing markets have seen a structural shift in the underlying demand profile, with more Australians willing to base themselves outside of the capital cities and remote working remaining a viable option across some sectors of the labour force, it's unlikely we'll see a mass exodus from regional markets. January marked a new record low for how much and how fast dwelling values have fallen in Australia. Based on the monthly index, national home values are down 8.9% since peaking in April last year, making this the largest and the fastest decline in values since at least 1980 when CoreLogic records began. However, it's important to understand this downturn in context. Record declines in home values follow a record upswing, both in magnitude and speed. The National Home Value Index was up a stunning 28.6% in the space of just 19 months prior to the decline. Despite the recent sharp downswing, values in every capital city and rest of state region are still above pre-pandemic levels, although Melbourne's index would only need to fall a further 0.4% before equaling the March 2020 reading. Low advertised supply remained a feature of the housing market through January, as the flow of new listings holds well below average for this time of the year. New capital city listings added to the market over the four weeks ending January 29th were 22.2% lower than over the same period last year and 24.5% below the previous five-year average. Every capital city recorded a below average number of new listings through January, reflecting an ongoing reluctance from prospective vendors to test the market. Such a low number of new listings implies homeowners don't need to sell, rather, they seem to be prepared to wait this downturn out. This trend of lower than normal levels of new listings has been persistent through spring and early summer, and now looks to be continuing into 2023. At the same time, housing demand has also fallen away. Capital city dwelling sales over the past three months were estimated to be 29.4% lower relative to the same period in 2022 and 11.5% below the previous five-year average. It's unlikely listings and purchasing activity will return to average levels until consumer sentiment starts to improve. There's a strong relationship between consumer attitudes and the number of home sales. With sentiment remaining around recessionary lows, it's harder for consumers to make high commitment decisions such as buying or selling a home. 
Adelaide's housing market has been relatively resilient to price falls so far. Although January did mark the sixth month in a row where dwelling values had fallen, the monthly falls have been substantially milder relative to Sydney and Melbourne and Brisbane. This is starting to change a little though, with the pace of declines accelerating from month to month, reaching a negative 0.8% fall in January. Despite this, Adelaide stands out by some margin as recording the largest capital gains since the onset of COVID, with dwelling values 41.1% above what they were in March of 2020. Clearly, there's a lot happening in the property market. Even though value falls have generally become less significant, it looks like this downturn still has some way to go. The trajectory of housing values remains intrinsically linked with the path of interest rates. The good news is the cash rate may be approaching a ceiling as speculation mounts that inflation moved through a peak at the end of last year and retail sales fell sharply in December. However, it's fair to say there remains a substantial range between the interest rate forecasters, highlighting the uncertainty about where and when interest rates might eventually land. A few clues that inflation may have peaked can be seen in the quarterly CPI numbers. While the trimmed mean remains extremely high, the quarterly rate of growth reduced in Q4, due in part to a sharp drop in the housing component of CPI, which carries the largest weight within the CPI basket. We can also see the main driver of inflation has switched from non-discretionary price rises to discretionary. As the recent spate of rate hikes eventually dampens consumer demand, we're likely to see a pullback on discretionary spending helping to push inflation lower. Once interest rates move through a peak, it's likely that housing values will gradually stabilize. However, there will need to be a spark to ignite another growth cycle. The most obvious stimulus would come from a drop in interest rates, but any cut to the cash rate probably won't incur until late this year at the earliest. Other factors that could support housing activity would be a rise in consumer sentiment, an easing in credit policy, such as a reduction to APRA's serviceability buffer, or fiscal incentives aimed at stimulating housing demand. Some downside risks from the large number of fixed rate mortgages due to expire later this year remains. Around two thirds of fixed rate home loans, which comprise a substantially larger portion of the loan book than historically normal, will expire in 2023, with many moving from interest rates from around 2% to closer to 6%. It's likely mortgage arrears will rise from last year's record lows, but the risk of a material increase in mortgage arrears or defaults should be minimized as long as labor markets remain tight. Although labour markets are expected to loosen through 2023, it's unlikely the unemployment rate will rise to above long-term average levels. Advertised stock levels will be a key metric to keep an eye on. Inventory levels remain well below average, mostly due to persistently low levels of fresh stock coming on the market. Such low advertised supply has arguably helped to keep a lid on value declines, but a lift in supply without a commensurate rise in demand could prolong the downturn. With overseas migration accelerating, especially among foreign students, rental vacancies are likely to remain extremely tight in some markets, leading to further upwards pressure on rents. The rental market is already imbalanced, with vacancy rates holding around record lows. At the same time, there's little evidence of additional rental supply coming to the market. The net outcome is likely to be a further lift in rents and a worsening in social issues associated with unaffordable accommodation costs. With so much happening and some important policy decisions coming up, you can stay in touch with the latest housing market trends at the research pages of corelogic.com.au or check out the CoreLogic Australia LinkedIn page.